Are you out here? What happened to our light? It just keeps flickering. I don't know. I think it's broken. What I do know is it makes it super creepy in here. What, what was that? Is someone out there? I can't tell. Maybe. Girls, what are you doing out here? Ah, you scared me! We were looking for you. Yeah, but the light wasn't working. We tried calling out to you, but no one answered. Oh, sorry. I was in the backyard, and I just came through the back door when I saw you standing here in the dark. You need to fix that light. Yeah, it keeps flickering, which seems worse than if it weren't working at all. Your mind can play tricks on you. For sure. You start seeing things that aren't actually there. Yeah, not having the proper light can be really scary. Welcome back to the channel, and welcome to episode 47. Today, we're going to discuss a scary topic. Ah, so is it like when you roll into the big meeting to give a presentation and then you realize you're not wearing deodorant and you forgot? No, Keith. Were you not watching the little skit video in the, in the beginning of the episode where, you know, the garage lights were flickering on and off? Oh, yeah, yeah, the skit. Yeah, there was a skit at the beginning, right. Hey, could you play that again? Would that be too much trouble? I don't think Nessa was paying attention. She... She needs to see it again. Seriously? Come on, man. Okay, so that's a no. All right, uh, Nessa, we're not gonna see that video again. All right, so stop asking. Okay, so the episode has something to do with light bulbs not working. Uh, but why aren't they working? Don't tell me. Nessa, don't spoil it. We're gonna figure this out. Hmm. Keith, it's because they're standard light bulbs not designed to be in heavy-duty use situations. You know, installed in garage door opener and ceiling fans where they're exposed to extreme temperatures and vibrations. Yeah, you know, you're really kind of asking for trouble by right? just using a standard bulb, uh, you know, incandescent or even LED uh, when it comes to something like a garage door opener, right? That has vibrations in it that potentially a lot of vibration. Yeah, you know, we should do a whole episode on that. I could do a whole segment on damage uh, induced by vibration. It would be epic. Keith, we are doing an episode on that. As a matter of fact, you're doing a segment on the damage that vibration causes. We even have a light bulb that we're reviewing in the process. Cool. So when are we doing that episode? Um, right now. <laughs> now? <laughs> Bruce, you gotta give me some uh, runway on something like that, you know? I can't. I think I can wing it, but geez, a little advance notice next time. Unfreaking believable. So, do you remember on the schedule in base camp there was a reminder about doing this topic today, a few weeks ago? Ringing any bells? Is it that time already? Wow, we better get to it. I think we're wasting people's time here already. You made that determination that we're wasting people's time all on your own, did you? You know what? Let's let's just let's just move on from here. Let's let's get into the topic. So, as our little skit at the beginning of the episode that you missed illustrated, putting a standard bulb into a garage door opener or ceiling fan or any other location where it's going to be exposed to potentially high levels of vibration is going to reduce its life probably well below what the stated life is on the packaging for that particular bulb. Yeah, exactly. You know, I actually have a ton of information on this topic. Uh, you know, I think the number one reason that people put just regular light bulbs in a garage door opener, for example, is just lack of knowledge. People don't know that uh, they shouldn't. You know, they can find a bulb that fits, so they just put it in. Exactly. I mean, quite simply, no one's ever told them to do something other than put a standard bulb into one of those fixtures. And then the number two reason is going to be price. So if you look at the cost of, say, this uh, Genie Universal uh, Garage Door Opener Light, it's rated for 5Gs, but it is a significantly more expensive bulb than a standard incandescent or LED uh, bulb. Now, a lot of people probably would say, you know what, for the cost difference, I'll just, you know, deal with the, the shortened life and no big deal. So I can buy, you know, three or four or five different bulbs for the cost of this one. The problem is you may not want to, you know, 
have that situation happen where you're in a scary situation, right? The light goes out in a very inopportune time because you're not gonna be able to control when that bulb decides to die from the vibration and it may not happen when you would you know, maybe have scheduled that uh, to take place. Murphy Law says it'll happen at the most inconvenient time, right? Yeah, that makes, that makes perfect sense. I mean, not everything can or should be driven exclusively off of a cost equation, right? I mean, what's a few dollars more when it's a safety issue at hand, right? That's, that's an easy call. Keith, I think this is a good time to jump into your information on how vibrations can kill those standard bulbs. All right, let's talk about vibration testing. So you're manufacturing a service duty LED garage light bulb. What do you have to do as a manufacturer to say that it's service duty? What would your engineering team have to do to say that? Well, it turns out you would have to prove that your light bulb can survive a particular test. And this is, uh, there's so many different shakers out in the world to do this type of test. I'll describe a couple. Uh, so here is an electrodynamic shaker. You plug it into the wall. Basically, there's a, probably a giant solenoid inside of there. Uh, and it will excite uh, your test specimen, your light bulb, in one direction, unidirectional. Uh, most likely, this is what's used for light bulbs. Not this particular manufacturer, but this type of shaker. Another common type of shaker I've seen a lot of uh, is this mass, ta um, mass table. I'll describe that in a second. This is from Team Corporation. It's called The Cube, which is a cool name because it's a cube. Uh, and it presents all these creative ways to mount a test specimen onto it because of that shape. But it's a hydraulic shaker as opposed to electrodynamic, so you can get more aggressive uh, across different frequency ranges with, uh, with this type of shaker. And it's also a multi-axis shaker table. So I, I kept hearing this term mass table before I really learned what that actually was. It's an acronym, multi-axis shaker table. So uh, that is uh, different types of shakers. There's many more. And the name of the game, whether we're talking about light bulbs or any kind of product, the, the idea is we want to replicate what the customer is doing when they buy your product, they're going to vibrate this light bulb. And you want to replicate that vibration environment in the laboratory. That's what you're trying to do. And for vehicles, there's very dedicated and special techniques that are used, um, which I'll save for another day. But for light bulbs, what's known as power spectral densities, these are what's used. So it's kind of weird. If you want to take a deep dive into what PSDs are, I recommend any book by Pearsall. This one's uh, Ben Dat and Pearsall. I like this book. It really takes a deep dive into that. But the whole idea behind it is we don't really know what any individual customer is going to do with uh, what, what the vibration environment is going to be. Bruce has more kids than me. They may open and close the door more often to the garage. They may slam the doors harder or softer than my kids. My garage door might weigh more than his and on and on. There's no way to know what any individual vibration environment is. But it's random in nature. It's kind of a stationary random type of thing that gets repeated a billion times. Uh, and because of that, we can characterize the amount of energy that's being pushed into this light bulb across different frequency ranges. And that's what this power spectral density function is. It's the input to the shaker and the shaker will come up with its own time history that puts the same type of energy into your product and it induces the same type of damage. That's the idea. If you can survive that test, you're great. What are the PSD profiles that you would use to program the shaker? Well, if you're selling to the military, they have their own standards. Milstead, Mill standard uh, 810G, for example, for light bulbs, DTL 16377J, they'll tell you what you need to do. Um, not only what the vibration profile needs to be, but also what's the humidity level, what's the temperature level, all kinds of things. Um, and uh, you can also brew your own PSD profile if you think you know your customers that well. And uh, also part of the name of the game is accelerating those tests. If this light bulb is service duty, light bulb is going to last for four years, we're not going to test this thing for four years. Engineers got a schedule to keep. So there are mathematical ways to compress that total amount of time so that the shakers don't have to be on for years, right? And these are techniques like uh, uh, FDS, MRS, SRS, more acronyms, but that's part of the name of the game. Okay, well that makes a ton of sense. And um, as a bonus, I also have uh, a quick unboxing video. Uh, and again, I don't want this to, to get too long, but a quick unboxing video of one such bulb that uh, will help you address that problem. Certainly it's not the only bulb out there, but 
This was one that I found, I researched, that was a good price performance from a name brand that you can probably trust, right? I think everyone's kind of heard of Genie. Uh, and so we will unbox that and then uh, you know show some of the results on how this uh, actually looks in the garage door opener. If we have any long-term problems with this bulb, we'll be sure to do an update and let people know that uh, we've you know changed our mind on it. Here's the light bulb we've been talking about. And one thing you'll find is from the outside, it really isn't one that you're going to distinguish very easily from a standard light bulb. Again, back to our discussion about the purpose of this bulb, it's really so that you can put it into an environment that is less than hospitable. So vibration, uh, maybe the climate isn't exactly what uh, you'd like it to be indoors, for example. So it's going to give it the ability to survive that vibration better. Amazon has these as a two pack. So here's what uh, you're gonna see when you open up the two pack, but here's how it ships. Is it basically is just uh, kind of a bundle I think they've created themselves, taking the two individual bulbs, putting them together into a single box. What you'll find is there's a little bit of packing material and the two bulbs that uh, I received. So uh, here is when you open up that box, what you get, the two bulbs. Let's go ahead and uh, open one of these up and uh, just take a look and see from a, bulb perspective is there anything from the outside of it that we can really tell that's significantly different there you go so from the outside looking all around uh you know it uh looks like a standard led bulb so this is a genie brand bulb you may recognize that name from the garage opener business. Now, obviously you could have a garage door opener company selling a more expensive bulb and saying that you need that for your garage door opener because of you know the environment that that uh, is in and the stresses it's gonna put on a regular bulb's filament. Even a standard LED bulb is gonna be a little bit more susceptible to that vibration than a standard bulb. I actually discovered this uh, through my garage door opener company and they don't actually sell the bulbs so they're really providing a recommendation about a product that is more expensive that they don't sell so it takes away a little of that incentive to you know tell you you need something and then of course just happen to have those ten dollar a piece bulbs uh, sitting on their truck yeah you know and to be honest here I think uh, I likely have to to think about swapping the bulbs in my garage door opener right now as well. Um, I mean, I know the topic pretty well. It's not that I have an excuse. It's just that I think I'm no different than anybody else. You know, your lives get busy and it's hard to force your yourself to think about something like that, right? It's not something you do every day. So, but if your lights go out in your garage door and it's dark, uh, you know, that's a potential safety concern. This is a no brainer. Frankly, Keith, that's, that's why we did this episode. Um, and I would love to take 100% credit for the idea, but really um, the idea for this, uh, this topic goes back to, I was having some work done on my garage door opener, and I happened to mention how you know, I was having some problems with what I thought was the fixture uh, for the garage door opener, and that the, the bulbs you know, kept, kept going bad. And the gentleman working on it said, well, you know, it's, it's probably not you know, this, this opener, it's, it's probably the bulbs you're picking, right? And he told me about the service duty or the rough service duty uh, classification of bulb and, and what that vibration was doing to the standard bulbs I was putting in there. And it, it did uh, make 100% sense to me. And I, I felt a little silly that, you know, with an engineering degree, I'd never really thought about, you know, the impact of that environment, right? That garage door opener. And depending on if you have a chain or a belt or whatever, it doesn't really matter the technology. There's some amount of vibration that is significantly more than what you know, a, a bulb sitting in a fixture that's mounted in your house is going to be exposed to. So that's really the origins of, of this episode. You know, and, and your, take your case, right? We have a detached garage, um, and I, I think it throws an extra level of, you know, safety concern in because, you know, that light might be the only light in your garage, uh, for example, and if, you know, having some light versus not having some light, you know, who, who might be lurking around uh, in the dark if your garage door light goes out. So anyway, that's, that's really, you know, why we went down the path and, and started looking at uh, this topic. Yeah, and now you're paying it forward, Bruce, because we're also not recommending that you buy them, or maybe we will. 
Uh, but let's get to that. Let's talk about that bulb specifically. The, um, what is it? The Genie Universal Series Garage Door Opener brand of bulb. Uh, what did you think of that bulb specifically? And uh, talk about whether you would recommend it. Hey, thanks for reminding me, Keith. Now, we, we've talked about the bulbs themselves just a little bit, but they've, they've really kind of gotten lost in the broader topic of, you know, the, the generically needing a service uh, level or a, a rough service duty bulb um, in your garage door opener and, and possibly even in your ceiling fan, right? Depending on, on uh, if you want to go to those links. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, so far, I've not experienced any of the, uh, the flickering uh, phenomena that, that can happen, right? So as a, the bulb is being damaged from the vibration, um, it gets into a mode where it's, you know, doing the scary movie uh, flickering uh, that you see. So uh, from a light output standpoint, I think these are uh, like 800 lumens. Um, so it's, it's decent for a garage door opener. So far, so good. And of course, as always, if, if we see any kind of, uh, you know, change in performance or I see a uh, major, you know, discrepancy between the rated life, which is 25,000 hours, they're saying about 22 years uh, plus of service, then we'll sure uh, do an update and make sure that everyone is aware of that. But for now, I'm going to say that this uh, garage door opener bulb is going to get our seal of approval. Cool. Well, you know, this is a pretty simple topic, but I'm really glad we did it. You know, it's really been a uh, an eye opener and a door opener for me. That was bad even by our standards. <laughs> you know what else is bad? Um, I don't know. Your next joke? No, we've reached the end of our episode. Oh man, already? Where did the time go? Well, if you've made it this far into the light bulb episode, I hate to break it to you, but you're a fan of the show. Yeah, that's absolutely right. You are a fan. And since you're a fan, why don't you behave like one already, okay? You know what that means, right? Like button. Yeah, do that. Subscribe. Oh, yeah. And you know where I'm going. Ring the bell. Do all three of those things. Do them in any order that you want. If you don't, then, you know, maybe you're not a fan. You should probably listen to Keith. He knows what he's talking about. Well, usually if he reads the memo. Anyway, from Bruce and Keith, thanks for joining us, and you'll see us on the next episode of Dad's Talk Tech.